Welcome to the Elegant Oxford. We specialize and offer premium shoe shines, dyes, and artisan patinas for a quality men's brands and help others to learn the art of shoe shining. Visit theelegantoxford.com for all of your shoe care and Saphir Madai Dior needs. Welcome to my second video in my review series where I'll be looking at shoes that I highly recommend you check out. I've made sure to look into brands that offer wide widths as well. Thus, this pair, the Chamberlain by Herring Shoes, comes in a G width if you're like me and I have a wide foot. The shoes come in a very sturdy and impressive looking box, probably one of the best I've seen so far. Alright, now I really like what I'm seeing here. Herring includes a jar of neutral house brand shoe conditioner and a shoehorn with every pair. That's just a small inclusion that I like seeing, even if the shoehorn is plastic. It still serves its intended purpose. Stick one of these in your car or in your briefcase in case you ever end up having to remove your shoes, so you don't end up doing the infamous no shoehorn fit dance. Now let's pull the shoe out and take a look. The shoes come with two navy felt shoe bags which feel really nice. I know of at least two prominent companies that only include one larger bag which I do not like at all. I always prefer two. I just feel like the shoes end up knocking together a little too much when you travel. I like having a bag per shoe to protect the shine. Alright, the shoes look great straight out of the box. These are the Chamberlain in mahogany calf, but in my opinion I'd say they look more like a medium coffee brown color. Mahogany usually includes some reddish tones, but these don't really have any, even though they are a very nice color. The Chamberlain is from the Herring Premier line, and they are actually made by Cheney & Sons, another English brand, so that's just a quick for your information. The Chamberlain is built on the 11028 last, and as you can see, it's a very elongated and regal last with a rounded toe, but it's definitely a classic English looking shoe with a longer forefront as opposed to stubbier, shorter designs out there. This is the shoe that will please the modern man, but it's also classic enough to catch your dad's eye, so it's found a good middle ground there, I'd say. It's not groundbreaking, but it's not boring. It's well balanced and sits exactly where it needs to be. Now let's take a look at the shoe trees, which are a house branded, lasted single tube design made from red cedar, and of course they have that classic aromatic yet rugged apricot smell that everyone seems to love so much. The Herring brand metal plate here is heavy and really impressive looking. Overall this is a fantastic shoe tree for the price. The shoes come in a wide G width, which is a standard E width in the USA, but as you can see, Herring has done a great job at widening the shoe in specific places so it's really well hidden and doesn't look too broad. In fact, Chris Clark has an article on the Herring blog where he discusses how G widths accommodate a wider fit without changing the aesthetic of the shoe. If you are a US triple E width, you'd be an H width, so just keep that in mind because sizing is not the same across all brands and in different companies. Alright, these are a cap toe Adelaide Oxford and you can tell by the broguing pattern that comes around the eyelets right over here. The shoes do not feature a medallion on the toe which I quite like for this style. These are a 5 eyelet Oxford and come with nice quality tightly woven round cotton laces. The leather here by the eyelets is close together for a sleek laced up look when worn without a huge V gap which I'm starting to like less and less. I prefer a very closed lace system and these definitely have it. There is some slight discoloration by the top eyelet, but it's nothing to write home about. The uppers are well built and everything is even and stitched correctly. These saw-like edges are called pinking and they are all well cut and in proper order. You'd be surprised, I still see shoes with uneven stitching, which affects the evenness of the pinking around the shoes, or I'll see brogues that aren't fully punched through and I call those hanging chads. Aside from that tiny area, the shoes have a nice finish applied to the upper with no discoloration, but there is some slight variation in color here and there, which I think looks really nice and brown, but it's not a complaint, just an observation. It really looks like wood, which looks really stunning. The upper is soft and malleable, which is good. Some leathers are just plain stiff and require a long break in, and these are just good to go in that regard. The worst thing on earth is having a new pair of shoes that start to dig in right into your heels as you start to walk. It's one of the most annoying things to happen to shoe owners, second only to a shoe that's too tight to wear. Now let's move down to the sole and the edge. The insoles look really great and I really like the embossed emblem here in gold, it looks regal. The shoes feature a 270 degree Goodyear welt, which means the heel can come in tighter here at the back than it would on a 360 degree welt, but that's something you have to personally prefer since people like the chunkier look of a full welt like what you'd see on a pair of Aldens. There's a full leather heel stack with a leather top lift featuring a quarter rubber tip here for traction. Now you'd be surprised that this little piece of rubber can actually prevent a nasty fall. I actually had a pair of full leather heel shoes that I took at the nastiest slip in when I was younger. It was such a pronounced and comical fall that I almost 
literally did a backflip like a cartoon. Moisture and a slick floor are a bad combination. This rubber tip will prevent that. Just ask the Suicide Heel Floorshine Imperial lovers out there. They'll tell you. Now, the shoes feature nice beveled rounded edges all the way around, which is pretty unique. The contours really mesh well together with the upper, and it's really easy on the eyes. We don't have any jimping here on the welt, which are those parallel indented lines most high-end pairs have, which is unfortunate because I think this is an important fine detail, but the shoes do have a good 7 stitches per inch, which is a great amount. A lot of pairs in this price range only feature about 4 to 5. Now I really like the two-tone paint job here on the sole. The juxtaposition of black and natural leather looks really sharp, and the embossed golden letters and cursive that say Made in England Goodyear Well to look especially nice. Now the sole doesn't have closed channel stitching either, but I find that's common with some English brands, and you see open channel stitching on pairs of Crockett and Jones that run for $700, so I think it's really okay since this pair retails for half that amount. This is still solid work, so I have to give credit where credit's due. Now, I know realistically no one's ever going to see the soles of your shoes, but it's cool to know that it's actually there. It's the thought that counts. The sole is a little thinner than I would have liked. It's not that it's flimsy, it's definitely sturdy, but it's on the thinner side. But if you like slim, sleek soles, this is perfect for you. I like double oak soles myself, or even single oak on the more robust side, but a slim sole is definitely appealing to a lot of people. Now you know these shoes aren't going to stay the way they are. I'm going to add some contrast and then shine them, but I didn't want to take that step until I had a chance to review the vanilla shoe the way it came from the factory. I just acquired an airbrush gun, so I'm going to use it to add some darkening around the eyelets here with some dark brown dye, and then I'm going to add some darkening on the toe. Nothing major, just want to make sure the shoe is more interesting and to my liking since they're mine. So this is my first time using an airbrush gun, but it's actually really user friendly. I'm starting off by using some Saphir alcohol based dye in dark brown. I think that's just the color I really want. Um, and I was actually pretty nervous before I started this, but um, to be honest, airbrushing is really intuitive and actually pretty simple. And uh, it's really hard to screw up. So as long as you're patient and you actually just go in, you're going to be fine. So um, I just went slowly and I really liked how it really applied the dye evenly and softly, no stark lines, everything just came out perfect, in my opinion at least, but um, give an airbrush a try, it's actually pretty fun. Uh, the only thing is that they're an investment, so they do cost extra money, uh, but for what I do, and since I always work on shoes and I take a lot of orders every month, uh, this is a good thing for me. Okay, here are the shoes before, and then here's how they turned out afterward. This pair really surprised me. When I unboxed them at first, I thought the shoes were only decent, but the more I look at them, the more I really like them. They have seriously grown on me and I feel like herring is really underrated in this regard. They really make beautiful shoes. I hope you think so too. This shoe is really versatile, so you can wear it with a lot. The herring website has a cool tool for you to get an idea of what might work with these, but I usually stick to dark wash jeans and olive green socks. But chinos, khakis, and even dress your ensembles would work just fine. This is definitely a shoe I can recommend, and even more so if you're a wide width and are having trouble finding companies that offer that option. I hope you've enjoyed this review. Please stay tuned for more entries into my shoe review series. I'll be looking into other great companies that I think you should look into as well. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, and share for more content in the future. Visit TheElegantOxford.com if you'd like to purchase any of the shoe products you've seen me use. Make sure to check out my other videos as well if you'd like to learn more about the art of the shoe shine. Don't forget to look for me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Elegant Oxford. Remember to care for your shoes so they'll last you for years to come. Always put your best foot forward. The small details matter most, so don't forget to hashtag shine your shoes. I'll see you next time.